In a dictionary of cliches, his photographs would be undefined. A Black Hills man spends his days as a realtor, his nights as an octographer. Tonight we meet a man who works his camera a bit like a magic wand in the starlight. Along the way in Spearfish. The images of Aaron Plogue defy adjectives. I think an image is going to mean something different to every single person. It's called noctography, and Plogue is clearly a natural. It's a play on words. It's nocturnal photography. And so therefore, everything I do is after dark. Giving old stuff new life while the world is asleep, like these old VWs at a junkyard. Right away, it reminded me of the Beatles for some reason, the, the, the band, of course. So Beatlemania was the name I came up with. When Plogue puts his eye to the camera, the target of his lens is clear. The rustic decay. And in South Dakota, we luckily have plenty of that. We, uh, we have it on the plains and old farms. We have our ghost towns, uh, mining towns of the Black Hills. Focusing on what is forgotten. Just happened to be out scouting, just driving roads aimlessly, looking for cool stuff to shoot. And that was an old stone home that I found that I'd never seen before. And a moment of glory for faded treasure near the once bustling Golden Reward mining land. It doesn't look like anything special in the daytime, but it sure posed nicely that night. Ironic that in pitch black, light is still the star attraction. Everything is different every single time, uh, depending on the moon, depending on uh, light pollution from surrounding towns, um, depending on the lights I take with me that night. Uh, some of my stuff is very basic, uh, homemade light toys and flashes and colored lights. Like the open pit in Lead, the historic home stake mine in the depth of night. So I had my camera vertically and I shot a, uh, a 15 second shot, another 15 second shot, and I did that six times. And then I stitched it together with a software program to get the wide look. He named this one Streets of Gold. No wonder why. All the light pollution from the traffic and the street lights almost gave it a, a, a glowing gold look. Perhaps the most golden of noctographic principles is this. Anything that happens as a light form during a long exposure will be preserved and show up as if it all happened at the same time. Capturing surreal sights. Star trails are the term and if you wonder why they all rotate around a, a central point, that central point is Polaris, the North Star. And so a lot of the time, I search for that star before, while setting up the camera because I, I, I like the circle look. It, it's dramatic. It, it's almost like a vortex. Even a tree, a photo named Tall Dark Stranger, is mysterious in the vortex of noctographic reality. An old miner's cabin in the ghost town of Tintin looks like it's on the Las Vegas Strip, thanks to a bit of lighting and a night-long dandy of a star trail. This is the longest long exposure I've ever shot. It was an eight-hour exposure. Uh, it was so long that I camped on the ground on my sleeping, in my sleeping bag next to the tripod just to make sure that nobody would come along and steal my, my equipment. Raised on a farm in northern South Dakota, still some farm boy in his blood and not afraid of a little dirt. I'm crawling in and out of these cars and homes or just hiding behind a tree, lighting lighting it up from behind the trunk. Plogue grows a steady crop of striking images in the fields of days gone by, harvested with his camera and a strong sense of South Dakota roots.